Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is my shop tips number 763. Look back at numbers 761 and 762, and I'll, sh I'll show them here in a clip, which also deal with this sun growler. Now, the purpose of a growler, of course, is to test armatures and uh, commutators and all of that, and that's what uh, the first video is about. And this is video number three in that series, and I might be stretching it just a little bit, but using the growler, I want to show you what paramagnetic metals are. Now, you're very used to ferromagnetic, or should I just say magnetic materials, such as cobalt, nickel, and iron alloys that are magnetic. But let's talk about some other alloys and metals that are not magnetic but they are affected by magnetism so this may be of some interest to you it's more scientific I guess than what it is shop related but I hope you watch let's get on with it these are the two other videos I have in this series where I use the growler check them out and I'll put the links in the description I hope you will bear with me as I read these definitions of ferromagnetic and paramagnetic. Ferromagnetic materials are strongly attracted to magnets and can become magnetized. Above a temperature called the Curie point, ferromagnetic materials lose their magnetism. Iron, cobalt, and nickel are ferromagnetic. Now the definition of paramagnetic. Paramagnetism is a form of magnetism whereby some materials are weakly attracted by an externally applied magnetic field. Examples are copper, gold, silver, aluminum, titanium, brass, tin, platinum, some types of stainless steels, lead, magnesium, bismuth, and molybdenum. When I was a boy, I was watching my dad doing some wiring, and he was installing some boxes like this, and he knocked the knockout. Those are called knockouts, but he called it a slug. And he put threw it on the floor, and then he said, uh, take that, there's a slug for you. And I said, Dad, can I buy a Coke out of a machine with that? And he said, no, that's a slug. There's a magnet in the changing mechanism, and it would catch that, and you couldn't get a Coke. Besides, that would be stealing. But some vending machines also have sensors in them, I believe, that will pick up paramagnetic materials if someone would attempt to make a slug out of uh, copper or, or something like that that was not magnetic. I may be wrong on that, but I, it seems to me I remember something like that. But I'm going to use the growler for a purpose that is not really intended, but just using this strong magnetic field here to, to talk about these paramagnetic metals or materials. And I've got about 10 of them that we will run through here as samples just for you to, uh, to, to see the effect of it. So let's begin. In case you didn't watch the other videos, a growler is a device used to test armatures off of starters and generators and motors and so on. And when I turn it on, You'll hear it buzz or growl. I've talked about this in the other videos, but there's a tremendously strong magnetic field there. Notice I can hardly turn the armature. However, when I turn it off, it spins freely. So you can see that this magnet here will very strongly attract a piece of steel, such as this file. And here is something you don't see very often. This is nickel used in nickel plating and I don't have any cobalt to show you but I do have nickel and that is magnetic. Probably no one has ever shown you that. So those are ferromagnetic materials. You knew that. This is a piece of cold drawn steel, inch and a half in diameter. I'm not going to let it touch, but as I put my hand in there, I can feel a tremendously strong surge of, I'm going to use the word power. I can feel it humming and pulling toward the magnet. 
All right, here is a solid bar of copper, pretty good sized piece. We know this isn't magnetic, but holding it like this, again, I got to get it fairly close, but I can feel it humming and buzzing in my hand. So it's affected by the magnet, even though it's not magnetic. Here is a slug of lead. And I'm not feeling much, but I believe I am feeling a little bit there, but I'm not even totally sure that lead is magnetic. And I'll try it with solder as well. That's 50-50. I feel nothing. And this is tin-based solder. And I really don't feel anything. The tin-based is always a lot shinier, I believe, than the lead-based solder, which is now pretty much taken off the market. Just in case you didn't see this in the other videos, this is swarf, steel swarf or chips. It almost appears to boil. Again, that's steel, which is an iron-based alloy. This is steel wool. I'm back to magnetic because I, I forgot to show you this, but I think this is so neat to, for me to hold that. Naturally, it's attracted, but I've, I feel tremendous surge of power just holding that steel wool in the magnetic field. Aluminum is paramagnetic. I can feel it humming and buzzing in my hand. But I have to get it fairly close. Now this is a piece of uh, Babbitt. Now Babbitt has different materials in it. Lead and tin and I don't know what all. There's different alloys of it. And I am feeling a little bit if I get it close enough. Here is a bar of tin. I don't really feel anything. Here's brass or bronze. I can feel it and you might hear it as I get it real close. And you hear a little bit of difference in the hum. Did you know that the great Merck company used to make and sell mercury. They even call it Quicksilver. I'm sure that you have a little jar of that in your home. But these are mercury switches. Remember, remember those? They were in thermostats and different in furnace controls and different things like that. But I can feel those hum and buzz. So mercury is paramagnetic. I can't feel much with that. I feel nothing really, but maybe it's due to the fact that this is glass. Well, this is glass too, but it's pretty thin glass probably compared to this. Don't play around with mercury. I'm surprised I'm not crazy as a mad hatter because we sure played a lot with it when we were kids. My brother even put some in his mouth to see how far he could spit it compared to water. I've told that story and, and, uh, and he lived to be 78. Well, I'm not saying don't put it in your mouth. This is terribly dangerous, heavy metal material. Don't play with it. Throw it out. Here's a tungsten carbide end mill. Brand new. And it's very much paramagnetic. But just trying a little electrode from TIG welding, which is probably pretty pure tungsten, I feel nothing. But then again, it's a very skinny piece. These are zinc window cranks. They were die cast. It's about the only source of zinc I could find here real readily. And I don't feel anything. 
I'll try uh, another piece here in a minute. These are anti-spark wrenches. I'm, I forgot what the alloy is or what they call these. You know, they're non-sparking, Ampco. And I don't feel anything. Steel ball bearings. Now we know these will be attracted. I just like the feel of this when I put it in the magnetic flux here. Magnetic field, I mean. You can feel the energy and the power. This is a Zamac gear off of my Atlas Craftsman lathe. And you know, Zamac is zinc, aluminum, magnesium, and I think copper. Kind of forgot. But let's see. Yeah, extremely paramagnetic. I can feel it. And what this is an alloy, so I'm not sure what uh, alloy or what material or element in there is is the one that has the uh, the ability to make this buzz in my hand. It might be two or more of them. Certainly the aluminum. Here's my last example. This is silver solder, which would be about 50% silver or possibly even less. So I'm just going to hold it like this in the magnetic field. And yes, I do feel it. So there's brass and silver, I believe, is what's in silver solder. So that alloy is paramagnetic. Well, put it in the comment if you found this at least mildly interesting. I suspect there are some of you out there that aren't familiar with the term paramagnetism. So maybe this was enlightening or interesting to some of you. Watch at the end of the video. I have lots of old pictures on there that interest some of you. Remember I have 1300 shop videos that you might enjoy. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and that pretty much puts my series of, uh, of uh, experiments with the growler to rest. This is an antiquated machine. I don't think you can even buy them anymore but I found it somewhat interesting and kind of wanted to show it off to some extent. See you next time.